I'm not trying to make my kid into my image. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like I'm, they're in God's image. Right. And I think that's always the trickiest thing as a parent is going exactly what John said. I know my path that worked like this. And so if I can just get them to do these little steps I did and do the, mm-hmm. and avoid the pain mainly that I did, or, you know, then, then they'll come out. Okay. Or whatever. And I think that's just where God's like, man, that's just, you know, that's not the script here. Hi friends. Welcome to the talk it out podcast. Today, we are talking about parenting with the Dadville podcast, guys. So we're ready to talk it out together where we all just gather together. We share our real feelings, real life, and we talk about how God's Word fits into all of it and how God wants to help us through every situation. And when you talk about parenting, you maybe need more help than you do with anything else on the planet. (laughs) So Dave Barnes, John McLaughlin, thank you both so much for being here with us. It's really Fun. You guys are, of course, on the Dadville podcast, and then you are uh, songwriters, musicians with great careers. Your husbands and dads. Tell us a little bit first about your your children and their ages. But well, we'd rather not. No, oh, okay. um, <laughs> that's too personal. Yeah, it's too, yeah. no, it's going to be um, a short podcast. Yeah. No. So anyway, we'll check back next week. Um, no, we both. Um, the, the kids stair step ages is really fun. So I have three. Uh, ben is 11. Susanna Jane, we call her Zanna, is nine. And then Sam is seven. And then his two. And are, Sam is a boy or a girl? Boy. Okay. Yeah. Could go either way. It could. No, yeah. No. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's true. Yeah. And I have two girls. Luca is 10. And Liv is eight. All right. Fun yeah. ages. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. all play together. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's so fun. It's one of my favorite things is like we are, we just got back from a trip or you guys just got back from a trip. I can't remember, but we hadn't seen each other in a while and we were at the house. And as soon as we were back or y'all were back, little Xana was just like right at the door, just like knocking. She knows the code. She comes in. (laughs) My girls just like run and hug her. It was super sweet. Oh, yeah. that's fun. I that's told her special. to go try to get some money. We know they keep their yeah. money. And yeah. so <laughs> we actually just, we, to be, we didn't know they were home. And so then we had to, yeah, oh, right. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I had to call We've them. We've been yeah. waiting for you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Money back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Aaron and I were just talking after um, the last time we did a podcast with you guys. Um, and she was just saying, they're such good friends. They're so cute. They're just like you and me with boy haircuts. <laughs> Isn't that That's, sweet? We tell people that on Dadville all the time. I'm going for a guy here, here so thank you. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. I recognize Sometimes it. Sometimes it doesn't land. No, I going for yeah. A guy. yeah, really good work there. <laughs> you all finish each other's sentences yeah. the way that Ginger and I do. It's yeah. real sweet. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you, you, y'all know, it's like when you've done something like this for long enough, you really, really, really do start to go... I know what they're about to say. Yeah. I know the mm-hmm. story they're about mm-hmm. to say, or I know by their face, you know, they want to change to, yep. a diff- you know, whatever it is. So you do, you do get to where you're you kind of yeah. like, you or, know, oh, not that story again. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> here we go. Well, we're not happy. We should pivot. <laughs> yes, yes. Yep. Yep. Look yep. at me over here. Look at my face. We're pivoting. <laughs> Oh, yeah. There's there's plenty of that. Yeah. Well, we are going to talk a little bit about parenting today. And mm-hmm. I'll tell you the joys a little bit of, of... I have two grandchildren. Wow. So they are three and four. Mm-hmm. And it's so much fun. And mm-hmm. it's so much fun to see your children suffer for their sins the way... <laughs> I told you. I told you. <laughs> As they have children who do what they do. No, yeah. there's no there's no yes. suffering involved. <laughs> sure. um, it, it's just so much fun. But our our three year old uh-huh. uh, little boy, he does not like to go to bed. It's mm. not his favorite thing. It makes him it makes him very unhappy because like like. I have, he, he has FOMO very badly, oh, yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah. want to miss yeah, out, yeah. and yeah. I completely get mm-hmm. it. I understand. So during the day, um, my daughter had just mentioned, because our, our grandson has this fabulous curly head of hair, it's glorious, and um, she said, you know, you, you need a haircut. And he's at the age where he will argue about anything right now. If you mm. say the sky is blue, he will say it is not. Right. Mm-hmm. And But anyway, she said, you need a haircut. And he said, I do not. And that was the end of the conversation. You know, you think no big deal. So then, I don't know, eight hours later, it's bedtime. 
and they're putting him in bed. And he goes, I need a haircut. I can't <laughs> sleep with this hair. You're like, oh, <laughs> how funny right yeah. now. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So as the grandparents, you just get to laugh. Oh, yeah. yeah. But and the leave. parents, yeah. But it's, it's not funny. Totally it's different. It's not funny at bedtime. It's um, that hour. John and I asked this a lot on the podcast. Like, what's the... What's like the one part of the day you would just nuke if you could? And that <laughs> bedtime. Bedtime. That's got to be the number one answer. Oh, it's just, and it's even with the kids because you know again we're eleven nine seven so like they're they're out of like bath and mm-hmm. chasing them around and try, but it's just like <laughs> can we matter. just skip this hour <laughs> and you guys be in bed and we can then you know go downstairs and not have to yeah. worry about yes. this. Well, anymore. the biggest thing I feel like for me is like if I knew. Okay, we're going to be done in 45 minutes. Yeah. They will be asleep in 45 minutes. Now, you're going to have to like do the bath thing. You're going to have to do the, the funny puppet show thing that takes all your energy. <laughs> but if it's done in 45 minutes... And that's just for Amy. I, that hasn't even started yet. The kids yeah. aren't even home from school. Amy does it for you. She <laughs> loves it. And I, to see her face light up. Um, but it, it's just like you just don't know. How, it, could, it could be 45 minutes. Or it could be two hours and 45 minutes. We're like, I need water. Will you get water? We got our water. But only or- the water in the downstairs that has the ice because yeah. I can't drink the bathroom no, water. Gosh, Heaven right. forbid. No, no, no. Mm-mm. Terrible. That's probably the most triggering thing to me as a dad <laughs> is just that hour. And, and it's just- completely opposite of a parent. At the end of the day, there, I've got nothing. No. They I don't are- have any questions for... I could be doing something really important at 6 a.m. and I don't know where... To, whatever. I, I, we'll figure it out in the morning. I don't have the... St- Strength to ask the question, and, and they are just at the height of their creativity. Of <laughs> how could I prolong this conversation yes. in a genuine, earnest way? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's when they start asking about theology, yes. faith. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. you know, birds and, and bees, anything everything. To stall. We started anyway. in Genesis the other night. Caden was like, "So let's talk about like how the stars work and like what's their purpose." And I was like, "This is so important. We should talk to Dad about this in the morning." <laughs> Right. I was so yeah. proud you didn't take the bait. Because sometimes no. when I'm not strong, I'm like, oh my God, is this, do I not laugh yeah, this all the time? This is the moment. Yes. Where <laughs> I, you know, like they, they reject the faith and become like <laughs> outspoken atheists. You always look back at this tour moment. the world yeah. to pull people from Jesus. And if you sit down with them, was, there was one night. <laughs> I'll never forget. About the stars. And he said, talk about morning, and I thought, and it's not real. It's not real. You know, that's, that's what I run in my brain. So it, I can get, I can, yeah. I'll bite some nights. So I'm like, okay, lay down. So son, the way that we know God is real, you know, and he's, he's like, <laughs> you know, like evil smile. <laughs> you can't live with the possible guilt. Oh, no, no. no. That was like, the moment. This could be no. it. This could yeah. be it. Are your children very different? Are all of your kids very different? Are they similar? No, they're pretty different. Mm-hmm. I mean, which has been fun because I feel like that's really come to light in the last like two or three years. Mm-hmm. Each yeah. of them have really yeah. great, you know, and this is the age where they do that, where yeah. they've really grown more into their personalities. But that's been really fun because, mm-hmm. it, you know, for a while they're just kids. They're yeah. just like little mm-hmm. bitty things running around doing all the same things. <laughs> and then, yeah, over the last like, you know, two or three years, you kind of see their little personalities and I don't want to play that anymore. And, and or Zana's like, that's not fun. And you're like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, mm-hmm. like, you know, luca has got some game she's really into or whatever. And it's interesting now that they're, like I said, my girls are eight and 10. And so Livy, our youngest, she's going through, like, she'll have the same second grade teacher as Luca had, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, she's really going through the same experiences at the same school with the same teacher and yeah. all, all these, these uh, you know experiences that she just handles so differently. Mm-hmm. I mean, we only have the two and they are they are so different. It's crazy how different they are, you know, in kind of hilarious ways. And it's so funny seeing what, like Luca will do something or say something or be worried about something mm-hmm. in a certain way. And, and I'm like, oh, sweet girl, you got that from me. I'm yes. so sorry. Oh, yeah, when yeah. you see those things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is... And, and you remember like, oh my gosh, when I was 10, that I went through that thing. Yeah. Like I started, I went through this phase where I was whatever it is, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Joyce lived with a lot of that and had, had a lot of that experience of her kids being very different. So we're going to listen to a little bit of a clip from a teaching from her talking about parenting kids that are really different. And we'll come back and we'll talk about more about it. 
I used to get so frustrated at Dave. So frustrated at my kids. I was mad at one of my kids because they were just like me and I didn't like that. Because they were always trying to control me and buck up against my authority. That was my oldest son. And then my oldest daughter was lazy and sloppy and I didn't like that. And my younger daughter was an extreme perfectionist and I didn't like that either because she was so... <laughs> she'd do her homework and just be in her room and if she made one little tiny mistake on the piece of paper, she'd wad it up and throw it away and I would be like... It would take her forever to comb her hair in the morning and put her makeup on. And then she would only comb this part. She didn't even do the back. She only did the part she could see. Oh man, and then my, our, our last son came along, Danny, who's now 35, and he about drove me crazy because he was like this super sanguine, energetic, never shut up, never stop moving kid. I hate to say this, this sounds terrible, but I actually was glad once in a while when he got sick because then he would <laughs> shut up and lay still. I mean, that sounds terrible, but I would think, oh, praise God, he's got a virus. He's gonna be on the couch all day. <laughs> Does anybody else in the building have a kid with that much energy that you just think, will you shut up? Mom, 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 mom. And no, I mean, he was really big time in the fun. And it was really hard to corral him. I mean, if I would try to punish him for something, I would put him in a corner and pretty soon he's playing with the flowers on the wallpaper. <laughs> Send him out to sweep the back porch and the next thing I know, he's out there dancing with the broom. So I got these four kids and they're all different. And I'm trying to change this one, trying to change that one, trying to change this one, trying to change this one, trying to change Dave, trying to change myself. <laughs> Does anybody get the picture? And I was like, <laughs> oh, I was so thankful when I finally realized that I could not do that, but God could make each one of us to be what he wanted us to be if I would put my trust in him. Some of you have got some projects that you need to give up on and you need to turn them over to God tonight before you leave this building. And then you know what's left to be done? You might be able to enjoy your life. Come on. You might actually be able to enjoy yourself while God's changing your husband. You say, well, what if he never changes? Well, then I guess if he never changes, you'll just trust God to give you enough grace to put up with it with a smile on your face. You wanna know the truth? Dave hasn't changed much. Well, he hasn't. He still does all the things that used to aggravate me. But now, lo and behold, God changed me. And now I don't care. I mean, it's true. That's a challenge as a parent, is not to try to always be changing your children into what you want them to be, yeah. to mm -hmm. be more like you, to be less like you, mm -hmm. to be more or less like your husband or mm -hmm. whoever else. But we all have these ideas of who we think our kids should be. Mm -hmm. Have you guys found that challenging? I, I know they're getting not older me, and I, you're starting to see Dave, that. You've got a lot I was going to make that joke. <laughs> with them. I was literally going to make that joke if you did. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that I have learned through doing this podcast and talking to smarter people um, that a lot of my anxiety around that mm -hmm. comes from if they're different than how I was, that is uncharted territory. Yeah. And I don't know how to navigate that. Mm -hmm. And I and, and it's like that leads me to be like, well, so do you think that you're controlling it now? Like, do you think mm -hmm. that you've got a you've got your hand on the steering wheel of their life because they're doing some of the things that you did when you were their age. You know, yeah. it's, it's all an illusion there. You know? Well, you know, too, I think um, 
parenting is just, it's really hard work. It's, it takes so much energy. And I think really attentive parenting, even more so because when you do have, I mean, to Joyce's point, when you've got kids, be it two, be it 20, um, that what, what I feel like. 20 is a lot. I just going to throw that in there. I'm going to be honest. If you have that many, maybe talk Talk about anxiety. Um, (laughs) Maybe think about why you make decisions like you do. Just do some homework there. Um, (laughs) Do some work on yourself. But, but, you know, I I think, um, I I remember talking to my parents about this. Like, they were saying that when they came up, this sort of, the way that parenting was taught was you kind of had a system that you put over the kids. And every Mm -hmm. kid went into this one system. Mm -hmm. Uh, whatever that was. Like I remember mom and dad talked about uh, first call come. So it's like if they said Dave and I didn't come there, I had a consequence. Like, so that was like one little ideology. But you know, what what I think people now would say in the same space, in the same sort of Christian parenting space is like that doesn't work because your yeah. kids are different. So so one thing that, so let's say your first child does really well with it because they're very diligent and studious and they want to please you more than any other children do. You're going, I'm crushing it and this system is the best. <laughs> but then you have your second child and it doesn't, mm-hmm. like doesn't resonate. Mm-hmm. You know, none of the discipline works and they don't do the thing you ask. And so I think what we've seen a lot, you know, talking to so many dads and especially specialists is like... The work of a parent is to look at each kid and go, okay, kid one, this is what really gets your attention. It helps you grow. It's an effective discipline for you is Mm -hmm. this. Okay, so that's how we deal with you. And this is how affection works for you. This is how encouragement works. Child two, the opposite. Anything I would do that would get your attention discipline anyway flies over your head. So now two, but boy, this works where I didn't with that one. And so I think that's why when you meet parents that – are really paying attention, they're they're worn out. It's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's and I think what you want to do is go like, hey, we have one system and it's just that we're gonna do all mm-hmm. we're gonna, but it's just we a, want a formula. We want a form yeah. it's yeah. it's sure. it is, yeah. it's easier. It takes yeah. us time. Yeah. And I think that's what is so draining when you think of kids sure. is like I mean there's a million things, but I would say in the season we're in at least is like yeah. really going, okay, like this is how this one needs to be cared for. This is what mm-hmm. encourages him, makes him feel seen. This is what makes her feel seen. Mm-hmm. And you know, and you want relationships that grow out with each, yeah. you know, and, and it's really hard, but it's incredibly rewarding, especially when it works, when you really see your your yeah. work bringing fruit, you know, and you go, oh my gosh, I feel closer. Or yeah. that discipline really did help. That kid missed the first one by a country mile, but man, the second one it really works with or whatever, you know. And so it's really time consuming. Sure. You know, it's hard. I got, a, I got a question and something that you said, John, earlier was um, how it affects like how you were raised or kind of your own issues. Mm -hmm. And so this is something somebody said on Instagram. Um, Some of my unresolved trauma affects my daughter. Mm -hmm. And to see her making some of the same decisions, it's like a mirror back at me. It's so hard to let go and to trust God, to be patient and know whatever it looks like, despite mistakes, to let God do His job. So I'd love to hear like what you guys think to that, because I think it's the same kind of thing. Like I want to control them because I don't want them to experience what I did growing up, or I see my own flaws in them. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think it's similar to what you were talking about. Yeah. I mean, it gets tricky really when you dive deep when I, and when I think about how, A, Dave and I have said this many times. I mean, you just, you want as a parent, you want to spare yourself from pain, really. Mm-hmm. And that's why having kids is so scary is because now your heart is just outside running around in the world and you're yeah. like, I'm going to mm-hmm. die if mm-hmm. anything happens mm-hmm. to these girls. Yeah. But when when I think about, I mean, of course you want you want to protect them, and there there is a lot of that that are, of course is useful and good. But there's so much that I have learned. It's not like you grow up and you learn a bunch from successes. Mm-hmm. I mean, we learn from mistakes, and we learn from failures, and we learn from pain. Yeah way more than we learn from the victories, I think. That's true. And so I think there's, I don't know where that line is. And that's, to Dave's point, that's why it's so exhausting being a parent because it's different for Livy than it is for Luca. And it's different than it is for me and my own personal, you know, journey and all that kind of stuff. So it, it's it's tough because it's just, you're just signing up for pain, yeah. you know, and yeah. worry and the unknown. And you just got to... As much as you can, you just got to try to let it go and give it to God, but it is so tough. Well, you know, too, I think um, 
we had someone say on the podcast once, you know, you can only take your kids as far as you've been yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I think to the, your mm-hmm. point about the Instagram comment, I think that's why it's so important that we do our own work, you know, which gets a little tricky in today's world because it sounds like, you know, I really have to focus on me and just kind of, I'm in a, I'm in a season of me, <laughs> um, you know, but, but it's true. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. I think when you think of our heart and our soul, like we have yeah. to care for it well mm-hmm. and we have to know why we work like we work. And Jesus has to be a part of that journey. He has to lead that journey, but we have to do that because what happens is we get caught in these cycles. I mean, I would say in the season we're in, you don't see it anywhere more than the athletic field, literally. Like if my kid is playing soccer, <laughs> this is so terrible. <laughs> but like, there's just so many times I want to walk over to dads and go, hey man, he's not going to heal your kid wounds. Like, Ooh. you know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. you making your kid be good at something is yeah. not going to take away the pain you suffered in your mm-hmm. life, right? And and I think that's really terrible and judgmental, but I know I feel that way. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you want to see your kids perform in these ways. It's sort of like absolve you of your grief mm-hmm. or sadness, or to John's point, avoid what you had to go through. Mm-hmm. And I think when you've done, you know, when you've done your work or you're doing your work on yourself and you're learning these things like, oh man, that's why that's a trigger for me is because when I played soccer in whatever year and my coach yelled at me, it shamed me. And then I didn't, you know, and so if you know that you go, oh, that's why I'm, yeah. fe- I'm sitting on the sideline right now feeling a million mm-hmm. feelings. Mm-hmm. But now I know that. So now I can just be quiet and know like, this has nothing to do with mm-hmm. him. He's having yeah. a blast out there. She's having a blast. This and is just being me. aware yeah. that that's even a thing is, is huge. Is it is. Huge. It's a big Two, step. Globally, I'm not, I am, but I hope that I'm, I'm not trying to make my kid into my image. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm, they're in God's image. Right. And I think that's always the trickiest thing as a parent is going exactly what John said. I know my path that worked like this. And so if I can just get them to do these little steps I did and do mm-hmm. the and avoid the pain mainly that I did, or, you know, then then they'll come out okay or whatever. And I think that's just where God's like, man, that's just, you know, that's not the script here. Sure. Like it's yeah. there's they're different than you and you're here to help steward yeah. and care for them. But you know, I got plans for them that are not you know the same as yours, which is r- terrifying. It is. it is terrifying. Yeah, you know? talk about mm-hmm. not having that control. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, and that's why, like, you know, my my parents, but also my parent in laws. Like, my wife talks so much about like how her parents were so vocal about like when they and my and mine did too. But I love hearing her talk about it. But she'll say, you know, my parents from early age were like, hey, you're not ours. Hmm. God has got you. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, I, I know Annie really young went on a mission trip, I think in high school and they were going to, I think, um, Peru and it was like scary, you know, third world, the whole thing. And her dad, you know, she says all the time, dad was like, this is not, you know, this is what God wants you to do. So you got to do it. You know, where I think yeah. any, nobody would judge him being like, honey, that is scary. And, yeah. you know, but he was like, listen, this is not yeah. up to us, you know, so it's, 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 the, it's hard it's work. Hard. It's really hard. Mm-hmm. It's really hard. Yeah. It's yeah. also universal. Yeah. Awesome. Like mm-hmm. like as I've been blessed to be able to travel all over the world and do our our hand of hope outreaches, we see so many needs and so many sad things that parents mm. are dealing with and watching their children suffer mm. and sometimes we have this impression that they're they're almost used to being in that mm-hmm. kind of situation and yeah. maybe they don't hurt the same way. Mm-hmm. But that love for our children yeah. mm-hmm. is so strong and exactly. so universal and of course there are parents who who have issues and right. doesn't go as we want but but God has just placed that in us that we don't want our children to hurt and yeah. nothing hurts us more yeah. right. than yeah. when they do. Yeah. So how do you keep from passing on those fears to mm. your kids? We just had this conversation over the weekend when we were traveling and so I, you know we've talked about before how there's certain things that make me anxious and Mike and I were talking about about it before. I said, traveling with the kids makes me really anxious mm. because there's so many unknowns. We're flying, that we have 1,000 car rides when we get there. It's just, it makes me very anxious. And so we had to talk through all that. Well, when we're there, Caden asks questions every 10 minutes. What's next? Where are we going next? What's going to happen next? What, what do I expect? And God so kindly showed me like this, what he's feeling is what you are feeling. So in mm-hmm. what you're learning from me, uh. teach that to him. And that makes me well, get a little teary because it made me feel one, like he's like, God sees me as a mom. I'm doing the best I can. And I'm just, I'm trying. And then I'm going to teach my kid, you know, it's okay to feel nervous because this is new, mm. but also we've got you, you're safe. 
and just keep asking questions. Mm-hmm. And I think not only does God use us to teach our kids, but God uses our kids to teach us oh in God. our own yeah. points. Sure, yeah. What yeah, else? I mean, I think just knowing again that it's a thing, just knowing, I mean, it's one of the biggest things that I've learned in doing this podcast. And I think it was our third, fourth episode. We had this guy, Stephen James on, and I was telling him this story about taking Luca, our oldest, to school for the first time. And all the parents were like in the cafeteria at this meeting and I could see all the kids out in the field and mm-hmm. they were supposed to be playing. And I could not pay attention Playground. in this meeting. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> the, the, word, the field. The word, it was yeah. a field. We don't know who owns it. It's fenced in. <laughs> Plowshares. The barbed wire. It was a cornfield. We couldn't see then, the children. <laughs> and the whole time I'm just looking out there like, mm. is Luca playing with anybody? She's not yet. She's not yet. You know, and then I'll pay attention. Then I'll look at, she's still by herself. And he was like, that is 1,000% your issue. Mm-hmm. Luca is fine. Mm-hmm. She's out there playing by herself. She's fine. She's, she's not thinking, will I not have any friends? Is this not the right school for me? Yeah. None of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that to me was just one of those moments where I'm like, that, that was my introduction into mm-hmm. even just the idea that the things that I see as being my kids' issues mm. are nine times out of 10, mm. just my issues that I'm, that I'm bringing on to this scenario. And when you were talking about your son, worrying about like, what's next, what's coming mm-hmm. next? I think it takes a lot of energy. I mean, when it happens at the end of the day, you're only seeing the symptom and you're dealing with the symptom. Yeah. Right now, our daughter is really worried about weather. Mm-hmm. Weather is a yeah. big thing. She wants to see the weather. Yeah. First thing when she wakes up, she, it's the last thing she wants to see when she goes mm-hmm. to bed. Any, I mean, she's, she's, maybe she'll be a meteorologist. So she's really good with the radar right now. <laughs> she can really zoom in and be like, she wants to be like, well, what's happening in St. Louis? Because that's coming toward Aww. us in Nashville. And again, at the end of the day, when you don't have energy, it's easy to just be annoyed with the symptom Mm-hmm. But there's some kind of issue that's happening. She's worried. It's some kind of security, you know, and it's it um, behooves us as parents to go take a breath, go to that next level mm-hmm. and be like, this is some deeper thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do I reassure her what's the right thing to say? And again, this is where the podcast is really practically useful in my life is we can talk to people who you know, who are smarter and know, here's maybe what not to say. Yeah. Don't get upset about this. Or, you know, just reassure her in this, in this way, like you said, like mm-hmm. we're here. Mm-hmm. Here are the things that we do to, you know, to know what weather's coming. You know, the house has been here forever. It's going to, it's strong, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it'll, you know, it's a phase and hopefully she'll get through yeah. it. But that's good. Well, that, you know, and we can talk about this if you want to, but so, our kids go to Covenant School where the shooting was um, earlier this year. And one of the – there's a million things about that. But to your point, mm-hmm. one of the things that um, on the day that it happened, we all gathered um, at this church to – because they were bringing the kids back to us. And um, Sissy Goff, who has Raising Boys and Girls yep. and runs Daystar in Nashville with our friend David Thomas, um, she got up because she was there just kind of – comforting all of us. and Let, Let's go backwards just a little bit for yeah. anybody who, yeah. who's not exactly sure what you're talking of. Yeah. But um, the shooting in Nashville, mm-hmm. as you said, that happened not long ago yeah. at, at a Christian school is, yeah. is, is the school where your children go mm-hmm. to school. When did you first find out what was going on? And how, how did you get to the place that yeah. you're telling us about now? Well, you know what was really bizarre? Ugh, that's too many things to say. But one of the most bizarre things about that is that the event only took, I think, 12 or 13 minutes. Um, mm-hmm. So it was a weird space-time continuum thing that morning because we were all learning and it was done, but I don't think a lot of us oh. knew it was done. So yeah. it was a weird, by speeding toward this, um, I was in a right with friends and my buddy was like, hey, your wife, I think is trying to call you, you need to call her. And so, because his wife knows my wife and she was like, you need to get Dave. And so I called her and she's hysterical mm-hmm. and says there's been a shooting at Covenant and... We don't know anything. And so, of course, I'm, you know, flying to the church. But 
but it had already been so it was weird because we're all going like is it happening and it had been like this was probably 10 35 10 40 and it had happened yeah. at like 10 12 but you're naturally in a panic yeah you know? so it's awful and everybody's freaking out nobody knows what's going on but one of the things that was helpful that morning as we were waiting for the kids was sissy golf got up and said listen when you get to be with your kids here in a minute you're feeling a million things they're feeling a million things mm-hmm. as best you can if you can stay calm, that's going to help them a lot, like a lot. And I think in this season, these six months, one of the things that Annie and I have thought about probably as much as anything is just that, the mm-hmm. posture of a parent to kind of go, we're not being inauthentic. And, and we've cried. and I mean, they've seen every emotion you can imagine. But at the end of the day, they are you can feel it. I mean, those, th- those first three days we got home, I mean, really a couple of weeks, but I just noticed like, I was always, a kid always had an eye on us. Like no matter where mm-hmm. we were in the house, okay. there was just kind of always like, yeah. are they crying? Are they sad? Are we safe? Are they crying? Mm-hmm. Are they yeah. sad? Are we safe? And it was this real call to like, boy, we got to, and you know, and we were very vulnerable. Like Annie would just be weeping or me and, and they'd be like, it's just, a, hey, we're sad. And then they would cry, you know, so, but it was a real reminder to us of like, man, so much of parenting there's just a third eye with your kid that's mm-hmm. kind of always pointed at you that's like, you know, is, is everything okay? Mm-hmm. And, and it's not that you need to be unauthentic. That's, and I would say the opposite. It's probably better for them to see that. But I think at the bottom of it, in our faith, there hopefully is some bedrock at the very bottom, even if it's at the very bottom, that says like, ultimately, it will be okay. Whatever this is, God, it is, God is in control of all this, you know? But it was a real, to your point, it's like that thing you, and we would say, I mean, one of the most fascinating images of that whole first week, we got home, we put all the kids on the kitchen island, we were all just kind of letting everybody tell their story. Cause it, you know, that was something she said too, just kind of don't infer anything like yeah. ever from now on, don't do it, but just to ask questions. And so we, they each got to talk about what happened. And it was so fascinating when they got done talking about it because everybody had kind of had it was <laughs> they were like interrupting each other. So you're sort of like, you need to, you know, <laughs> crying and then sort of like laughing and trying to do this whole thing. But when we got done, Annie was like, okay, we're going to pray. Me and daddy are going to pray. And so my view was Annie was looking this way. I mean, we're all really close. And Xana, my daughter, is opposite me looking at Annie like I am on the other side. And I mean, she just didn't blink. She was just staring at Annie. And while Annie was crying, her face was, you know, like um, like echoing all those emotions. And I just thought, good. It was just such a sign of like, man, I mean, this is such a big job, especially right now. But I think it's true in any scenario. I think like, you know, your kids are always kind of looking at, you know, it's kind of like, hey, is everything Mm -hmm. cool? And so, and it's not to say we don't need to be truthful, but I do think there is a call to being in relationship with God who is yeah. telling us ultimately, like, hey, I, I, I'm with you. Like, I'm with yeah. you, I'm with you, you know. So, um, but it's true. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sobering reality, you know. How did mm-hmm. you do that for your kids, though? Um, and, and reinforced for them that God loves them, mm-hmm. that He's there when they saw yeah. tragedy yeah. happen in front of them, that sometimes mm-hmm. bad things happen. Yeah. You know, it's been interesting. We haven't, I think because of their ages, um, there hasn't been that. I think if they had been older um, mm-hmm. and it was high school mm-hmm. where they're just sort of more cognizant of those things, there would be a little more, I would imagine more of kind of those really deep, like, is God good? Yeah. That kind of thing. That has not been our navigation. It's been... Um, it's been a lot of things, but it's never been that. And it, and it may be, you know, listen, this could, that's the other thing too, is you realize like this could iterate until eternity, eternity. It could, for as long as our kids live, there may be every seven years, one wakes up crying and it's like, what's going on? You know, just that sort of your body keeps the score stuff. So, I mean, that's the good thing about Daystar is they're all the kids, all of the kids at the school go there now and are being counseled and cared for. But so f- more of ours hasn't been that. It's just been more of like, you know, why are, why are you sad? And let's talk about that. And have things been hard or why, you know, mm-hmm. and it just, it just, you know, it snakes its way into so many things that, mm-hmm. you know, like you'll have a kid, you're like, well, you, 
you know, why are you acting like this? It's like three months later. So you, I'm not even necessarily tying that back. I'm just going like, he's kind of being like a, a jerk, you know? And then mm-hmm. we sat with, you know, uh, his counselor and he's like, yeah, I mean, this is what happens, yeah. you know? Like yeah. it just pops out all these weird ways. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we haven't done that yet. And I think we will, but it's been other ways to manage it and sort of talk about it that haven't thankfully been that deep sort of theological thing yet because yeah. I think I'm still struggling. Yeah, with how, that. how have you managed it as a parent? I don't, I mean, I don't know still. I mean, that's, Annie and I talked about it like two weeks ago, just kind of like, this is hard. Because I mean, yeah. you know, your first thing is you're like, how are they doing? Like, let's get them sussed out. Mm-hmm. Let's get everybody okay, whatever that means. And it's like, you kind of, and I've found that with so many of the adults, it's like months later, we all sort of went like, oh, oh, mm-hmm. that's not, I don't like that feeling, yeah. you know? And so, um, I mean, listening to just copious amounts of sermons on, yeah. on like evil and God's, you know, sovereignty and these things that you're like, you know, life is funny because it's, it's the Mike Tyson quote. It's like, you know, uh, you have a plan to you get punched in the face, you know, it sort of feels mm-hmm. like that a little bit. It's sort of like, you know, but um, yeah. And I think, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I feel like everybody I've gotten counsel from is like, there's no, there's just the only way out is through, you know, and so a lot of praying, a lot of like not understanding a lot of things and um, but still trust, you know, and like this is not the first evil thing that's happened in the world, yeah. you know, and God's here and he's so hard though. It, oh my gosh, it's impossible. It feels like sometimes, but um, do you and your wife find yourself leaning on each other at the times that one feels a little bit more vulnerable. Yes. And, and that has the been other really one. interesting, like that, just the natural way. In fact, you know, one of the, it, it, one of the lighter stories from that is we were, there were a million amazing things that our community did and Nashville did and just, yeah, the benevolence of our greater community. But Every day we had something we did with all the kids, which was the greatest thing because they got to be together. They weren't alone. It was awesome. But <laughs> it was like, you just, it was a lot, you know, because I mean, every day there'd be probably three things a day that were like, wow. we're all going to this playground and it would be hundreds of kids. Mm-hmm. We're all going and everybody would come, like everybody would come except, you know, the families who had lost their kids. But it was crazy. And so it's hard to navigate, especially with my personality and, you know, John too being humorous. It's like, Part of me coping, I just wanted to laugh. I was just like, I don't know what to do, but to try to lighten the situation. And so probably three or four days in, and you know, and, and everybody, like, it was heavy, but, you know, like, I was just so blown away by the by our Christian community. Like, it, it was heavy, and we grieved it. But, it. but again, not like people who don't believe what God has said. And so, you know, but, but for me, it was so hard because I was like, I just need to laugh. I just can yeah. feel like my pressure. And so we were at this thing and, and um, it was all the moms because I think the, the dads, I, I don't know by, but I went with Annie and I know all the moms anyway because our school is so small. So it's good to be with them. But it's like the third or fourth day after. And um, and so I walk into this group of moms and Annie's over here talking to somebody and and, uh, and one of the moms makes a joke. And I was kind of like, oh, what's this? Is that allowed? Is this, yeah. is this in play now? Can we? And so we start kind of joking. It just felt so good to kind of have some light conversation. Yeah. <laughs> and then he walks in right as I make a joke. Oh. And it, I was like, this, I can tell you exactly the conversation we're going to have in five minutes. So conversation kind of wraps up. We get in the car. And it was literally out of a sitcom. We kind of get in. She's like, so what was so funny? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I had to go like, well, so you know, like Janet made a joke and then someone else. And then I, and she was like, oh, okay. Well, I just didn't know we were joking. You know, it was like, and we, but we had this great conversation about exactly that. I was yeah. like, look, babe, like we're all going to have our ways to grieve. Mm-hmm. I just need to laugh a little bit. You know, it was like, I was, I mean, when we were walking, I could feel it. I was like getting in the car and she's, Mm-hmm. You knew it was coming, <laughs> you know. But but you know. But I think holding space for that, like you said, yeah. like sometimes me needing to just talk or whatever, and then Annie would kind of buckle down, and then I could whatever. Mm-hmm. It, you do, you do a lot of that kind of tag team, you know, in those seasons. But and still, it's some. But yeah, yeah. In, in those kind of situations, if, they're they're really just is no way to get through it without no, God's not. help. It's yeah. just it's just so hard to figure out. Parenting in general. Yeah. It, you know, it's hard and it's it's scary. It, it's a frightening yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. And so I I'm just 
so grateful that God was there mm. in the middle of it when I was really dropping the ball. All those things that oh, you say, gosh. this is going to be the day, you know, yeah. this is going to yeah, be yeah. the one they're going to talk about in counseling mm-hmm. for years to come. Um now that our our kids are adults, you know, you ha- you have that benefit of looking back and say, "Wow, God, you were so good to me when I could have really jacked those kids up really good," yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it, it it is one of those things, just just trusting a God that you don't always understand, mm-hmm. um, and you certainly don't understand the way that things work, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but. Um, and learning he's to in the teach midst your of kids it. that too. Yes, yeah. because yes. how can I tell them? Like I just, I just remember hearing about what's happening, and as a mom, thinking like I can't even imagine mm-hmm. to get a phone call like that. I can't, I'm here in St. Louis, and I can't let my kids out of the house. Like, what mm-hmm. good is that going to do me? So I don't know how y'all did it, except the grace of God. But mm-hmm. I cannot operate out of that fear as a parent. Mm-hmm. So in my unknowing of how God is good in this, I still need to teach them that He is good. Mm-hmm even when I'm searching for it. And I think that's one of the hardest things as a parent to do Mm. is I'm struggling with my faith, but I need to walk them through that too. Well, and I'll tell you, one of the biggest things that I learned without doubt is like you are reading your Bible wrong. Hmm. If you think (laughs) all those people were like, this is awesome. Everything works out Mm. for me. I mean, it's if there's anything that's consistent in the Bible, it's that people have hard things they go through yeah. That is it. I mean, yeah. it's like, yeah. that's what I think is so compelling about what trials. we believe. You will is that face suffering. That's one of Tim Keller's, I love hearing him, I used to hear him preach on this, but this idea, like, that's one of the things most compelling about Christianity. It's a book full of mess ups. It's yeah. not, look how we stuck the landing. Mm-hmm. It is like, this is a bunch of jacked up people that God loves. And mm-hmm. so I think for me, it was also a very harrowing moment to realize like, man, my faith gets real thin when things get hard. Yep. And it's like, I'm not really listening to God's word. Like I think, or I'm just not remembering it. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's everywhere. All of his disciples ended martyr deaths. This is, and I think it's really easy and where we live in this space and time to think like, hey, you do the right thing, you get the right stuff. Make good decisions, your life Mm -hmm. is good. And God's like, I never said that. Mm -hmm. Like I am good. Mm -hmm. I am always good, but like... That means very different. That was a, I had a great conversation with a pastor friend of mine, and I was like, "You got to help me." And he said, "Some of it is just the definition, because when God says good, it doesn't mean what we mean. Yeah. God is seeing things eternally, like good. He is good. It will be good, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean what we think good is." So I'm like, "Life, God, my life's not good." He's like, "Well, not like right now, it's not, but I didn't say it would be right now. Mm-hmm. You know, like I am still good, and you're with me. But that's, and so for me, it's as much about." Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not really remembering what God has said. And I've distorted trying to fitting it into my life to make my life make sense when that's not how God works. That's not Mm -hmm. what the Bible does, you know? I think as a parent, too, really holding on to that because there will be days and seasons in in your child's life as they grow and change and that that things are not good. What you're seeing happen, whether it's choices that are being made or things that are happening to them. I mean, that there are those things that we have to remember that God's plan is the long game. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's yeah. exactly right. And I think it's good and really useful and important for your kids to see you struggle mm-hmm. with that and be, yeah. Yeah. you know, after, after the covenant shooting, it's like, I, you know, we all the parents feel like a the sort of the veil, whatever veil was there that we just wanted to keep in place as long as we could yeah. of like, hey, the world's kind of scary mm-hmm. and we can't control what happens all the time. Mm-hmm. That's been ripped away, you know, and also I'm mad. I'm mm-hmm. I don't understand how this happens, mm-hmm. you know, and I think it's OK as much as I want to save that for once the kids are in bed and Amy and I can talk about that. Like, I think it's good Mm -hmm. for our kids. Like they're going to have whatever their version of that is. And so they can reference seeing how their mom and dad kind of worked through that. And, and, or even just knowing like, no, well, my dad felt that I remember that. So Mm -hmm. this isn't, this doesn't mean that I don't have faith. That's exactly right. It's okay for me yeah. to just be so mad right now. Yeah. And so well, I mean, thank at the end God, of my wits. You thank know? God for the Psalms. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, yeah. if you need evidence of 
abject sadness and loss and anger, it's a book full of it for you. Yeah. And God doesn't smite any of those people for that. Mm -hmm. God knows, you know? So I think, too, you know, it's such a beautiful thing to go like, hey, this is our faith. Mm -hmm. Like, if you read this book that we believe is what God has said and is saying, it is in there. So God didn't go like, oh, let's leave out anything where people are mad at me, like, let's kind of nuke that, and then let's put in all the, you know. <laughs> Edit, redact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but instead, it's like, no, this is, this is how, this is what it is to be human, you know? And yeah. so I think, to John's point, it's like living that, and I think that's why it's so important that we would cry in front of them. They would see Annie and I be sad and, and it not be something where we got into another room or waited till, and then really yeah. grieve, but to go like, hey, this is, God is still here. Like this, we don't abandon things, you know, like yeah. we don't understand, but it's still, this is what we believe, you yeah. know. And God gives us things to hold on to as parents too. I, I remember a time when, when my kids were little and, you, you know, we all go through different phases even as parents and when, uh, we have two daughters and when they were little, I remember a time when I felt like, Tim, my husband's just not connecting with them the same way I am, which was a very prideful thing to think, you know, like, mm -hmm. I love them so much, and I don't know <laughs> if he feels the same way I do. But anyway, and, and just working through those things, and you think, is it is it because they're girls, is, and which is not him at all. You just think things that are crazy, right. first of all, right. when you love your kids so much. He's a wonderful mm -hmm. girl he dad. Is. But he loves every princess movie there is, but that aside. <laughs> but I just remember God giving me the verse in Malachi, you know, that he will turn the hearts of their children to their fathers and of their fathers to their children. And it's just, God is so good to give us just something in his word, whether it's a psalm of, of anger and sorrow or, or whether it's another verse that we can just hold on and say, I may not... I may not understand this. I may not see this today, but God's word is true, and I'm I'm standing on this. Yeah. And as a parent, when we have that to stand on instead of fear, mm -hmm. then that changes our entire way that we parent, and yeah. that that fear doesn't transfer yeah, to our right. kids. Yeah, that's, that's right. Good. Well, we're out of time, and I am so sorry because I wish we could talk a whole lot more. <laughs> this is great stuff, and thank you for sharing. Yeah. It's it's really hard, and it's yeah. it, we we appreciate your honesty yeah, and. Thanks. Both of you guys being here with us. It's well, been a know, lot of fun. You, we've had, I mean, you know, I'll say this lastly, people praying for us has mm. been transformative. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What, a, what a wonderful gift to give, mm. to pray at a time yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, we want to remind you as parents that God knows that what you're doing is really hard. And He is there. He's equipping you. He's loving you through it all. He knows your fears. He knows your anxieties. And it's okay. Give them to Him. Keep doing your best. You can walk it out, what we're talking about. Go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. There are more scriptures and things in there that you can dig into for this episode. So you're not just listening, but you're really figuring out with God's help how this applies to you. So go there. There. Catch up on some of our other episodes. Check out the Dadville podcast. And I know that you'll pick up a lot of great parenting tips right there. And um, we are just so grateful that you've been with us, that you are one of our friends who sits in and lets us just share our heart with you. And we will see all of you next time on Talk It Out.